Welcome back, everybody. I'm Kalani, and in this lesson, I'm going to be showing you five instruments that you really need to know how to play if you want to teach or play percussion. These are basic percussion instruments we're going to cover in this lesson. I'm going to show you the instruments. I'm going to show you how I play them, and we're going to put them together in a loop, just like you heard. In fact, I'm going to erase all the stuff I just put in here so we can start fresh. Welcome. So I've got some instruments right here. I've got a conga drum. I've got, hello, I've got bongos. I've got a tambourine. I've got a cowbell. And I've got a shaker. All right, so those are the five instruments that I want you guys to learn how to play. So I'm going to show you right now, and we'll put it together. And I have longer lessons on all of these on the World Drum Club channel. But let's just go over basics right now, all right? Super basics. So for congas, let's start here. You're going to put the drum, you're going to center yourself on the drum. This drum is flat, but I could tip it a little, maybe to the side if I want, you know, kind of open up the bottom. Not necessary, though. Just address the drum. Uh, you can kind of see where my arms are, right? They're sort of at a good height. You know, not, the drum's not too high. It's not too low. And we're just going to learn two basic uh, strokes right now, two basic sounds that are the bass, which, and I want to correct something that I've heard out there. Some people say to play the bass in the middle of the drum. No. Play the bass around the kind of donut-shaped area between the rim and the center, and that's where your palm goes. Your fingertips might be in the middle, but don't strike the drum right in the middle. That's a dead spot. We want to avoid that. And that goes for pretty much all drums, unless you're going for a specific sort of dead sound. But usually we play drums towards the edge or, you know, in that midpoint between the edge and the center. So bass tone, hand is flat, relaxed, just like that. Easy. All right, let's move on. Open tone. Now, this is where you want to pay attention to your alignment here. And I am wearing a ring. You don't necessarily want to do that. This one doesn't really get in the way, but probably better to not wear jewelry when you're playing congas. All right. My fingers are lined up with the rim where my fingers meet my palm, right? My knuckle line is lined up with the rim, basically, the, the bearing edge, right? That's what we call this, where the head uh, folds over the shell, all right? And that's where we're going to strike the drum with our fingers. That goes for both hands equally, all right? Thumbs are out or up or just out of the way. Okay, really easy. All right, those are the basic tones and we have more tones and you guys can watch other lessons. The other tone is the slap tone. I have to turn my mic down to do this one. That one, you just basically relax your hand I have lessons on that. All right, so we got three tones on the conga drum, but you can probably get away with bass and open, if you're, especially if you're doing elementary music. Let's go to the bongos right here. Bongos are two drums, as you can see, connected in the middle. We've got a high one on the left, low one on the right. I want you to take a look at this arrangement here. It's pretty flat, all right? Don't angle the bongos towards you. I see people doing that. I don't recommend it. If anything, put them angled away from you so that if they're a little lower, your finger line is still, your fingers tips are still lined up pretty much with your elbow. This is flat here. We don't want to be playing with our wrists bent one way or the other, all right? Ah, uh, bongos. I like to use my index finger most of the time, but you could use your three fingers together to play near the edge. Now, the easiest way I think you can just do this is just play near the edge. Right, on the high drum and then play a little farther in on the low drum and those are your high and low sounds. You don't have to do anything really fancy, just okay, let's look at that from above. I like to use my finger, my one finger. All right, so you know you have to figure that out for yourself, but um Fingertips on the high drum, full fingers, maybe two, two knuckles worth or so on the low drum. All right, let's get to one of our favorite instruments, the tambourine. Now, the tambourine, everybody's familiar with, right? But I want to show you a couple ways that you can play it. 
One, of course, is well. Let's get let's get to the to the basic way. One is hold it and tap it like that. So if you're just doing backbeats, um, you could just tap it one and two and three and four and one and two. All right. So we have a holding hand and a playing hand. But you know, typically people are shaking the tambourine, right? And so when you do that, you want to hold it like this vertically, pretty much, and you're going to shake it back and forth. This way, sideways, and then you just strike your palm. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Okay, so we're gonna do that in a minute. That's tambourine basics right there. But remember, when you're when you're playing the tambourine and you're doing single hits, you just hold the tambourine steady and do the single hits with your other hand. That's a good tip. All right, let's go to the cowbell. This is a typical cowbell. It's kind of a small cowbell. Now you can play it with a small stick. Do not use full-size drumsticks on the cowbell. Don't use loomy sticks uh, or lummy sticks or whatever they're called. No one knows for sure. Uh, use a short stick. I've got two versions here. I've got uh, this one, which is a half, basically a half-length timbali stick. Now these I, I designed for Vic Firth. They're not available anymore, unfortunately. Um, but it's basically a half of a timbali stick. You don't need a bead on the end, just a simple stick is fine. This one is what I call a PEX stick or super stick made from PEX tubing that you can get at the hardware store. I have a video on these, how to make them. Basically, you just get it and cut it and then file the edges. This is a plastic-like material and it's super strong. These will last forever, probably outlive all of us. Um, so that's a PEX stick. All right. Let's look at how to play the cowbell. You're going to hold it in your palm like this, and then you're going to use your finger on the bottom. How can I show you? This one to mute it and unmute it. So it's kind of like that. And then you've got the stick. You're hitting the edge, the open edge, right? Which we can do open or closed. In other words, we're muting the bottom. And then we're playing up here on what we call the shoulder or just the closed end. And so we've got those two tones. All right, and we can do, we can mute. Usually what we do is mute it on the high, high side, on the high sound, and then, and then open on the low. All right, that's a nice tri uh, triangle. That's a nice cowbell sound. All right, our last instrument that I think is just fundamental is a shaker. And it doesn't really matter what type of shaker. I made this one out of yogurt, drinkable yogurt, the uh, Yakult. Uh, I made that out of Yakult containers. I've got a video on how to make this shaker. You've probably seen some of these around, but I made this one. And this uh, any shaker, you're gonna do this, this movement, all right? like that, away from you, and kind of at a, oh, it doesn't look like it right here, but you wanna be kind of across the 12 o'clock, you wanna be vertical, uh, and the first thing you're gonna do is learn to do this. All right, back and forth, bop, beep, bop, beep, and make some short sounds, and then on top of that, you wanna be able to do like a, just an easy, almost like nothing, almost like not moving at all. All right, and I've got a full video on how to play shaker properly. I'm just showing you. Now this goes for all shakers, doesn't matter. Egg shaker, tube shaker, metal, wood, plastic, whatever you have, all right? And you can start off accenting the downbeat, the first beat, one, two. And then as you get skills, try to do Okay, now let's put everything together. I'm going to do a basic, basic beats. I'll just play something like a, what we call a boogaloo rhythm on congas. Now that's using the open tones and the slaps, but you could substitute open and bass or bass and open. Uh, however you want to do it. I'll be doing a simple pattern on the bongos. Let's go to the overhead. 
da da doo, da 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 doo. And you can see here, I'm kind of doing what we call ghost tones, which are I'm moving, but I'm not really playing anything. It's just a filler movement to keep that motor going. All right, on the tambourine, we can do our typical rhythm. I'm going to shake it. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Uh, cowbell can be just four on the floor. Three, it could be just simple. One, two, three, four. But why not put in a couple little, little high notes? So we'll do that. And then the shaker, super simple. One, and two, and three, and four. Let's go. Let's start with the shaker. Why don't we? All right, and let's get a little loop going, and then I'll check in with you after. That's it, you guys. What do you think? So that's a basic percussion ensemble or section. Conga, which is our hand drum. The reason I wanted to show you this is because the congas, you know, you can transfer that skill. Now, it's not exactly the same. I'm not saying it's exactly the same, but I'm saying if you can play congas, you can transfer that over to something like djembe, or tube drums like tubanos, or any kind of hand drum that we play with our whole hand. Bongos, let me go back over here. Bongos are what we could call an edge tone drum. Now you can transfer that skill to darbuka, or what we know as dumbek, or a frame drum. Uh, any small drum, that technique will work, even cajon, perhaps. Uh, or a combination of these techniques on cajon or a small cajon, anything like that, any small drum, uh, to small to medium-sized drum, you can do edge tones and then like finger tones, let's call them, all right? So we've got all of our tones there, our techniques, but we can transfer those to other instruments. Okay, tambourine, it's fundamental, it's ubiquitous, it's basic, and it's a skill that you and your students um, can take in lots of different directions. And I, I could replace the tambourine with another similar instrument, something that, you know, just shakes, uh, especially just playing this way, holding and playing that. There's a lot of instruments like the uh, shakere or rattles that you could transfer your skills over to that. Cowbell, of course, holding and playing with a stick. There's tons of idiophones, blocks, bells, even scrapers use a similar up and down technique that you get with a stick. And that's why I wanted to show you the cowbell. So you can learn how to handle, how to hold, and how to use a small stick. And that's a great technique. It's transferring to all kinds of things, right? Paddle drums, uh, idiophones, scrapers, all kinds of stuff. And then the last technique uh, is for the shaker. And of course, the shaking technique, the reciprocating action of the shaker can also be transferred to a variety of different instruments with different sounds. But the other reason I wanted you to learn these is because this is just a very simple percussion set and this kind of setup where you've got a conga drum or a couple congas, bongos, a bell, uh, a tambourine, you know, and a shaker. That skill set, you can do a lot of gigs. If, you, if you're students or you want to do a percussion gig, just take this stuff and you're covered. This is what's in most music. So that's another reason I wanted you to learn these particular instruments. All right, if you guys have any questions, you can see me at patreon.com slash Kalani. I have lots of videos, videos on all this stuff and a lot more. 
on the World Drum Club uh, YouTube channel, which is World Drum Club. Uh, thanks for joining me, and I hope you've enjoyed this. If you have, give it a thumbs up, subscribe. Make sure you hit the so you get notifications, and I'll see you guys in another video. Thanks for watching.